In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. So today is the third Sunday in our season of creation, and the focus is on Earth. Earth. The earthiness of creation. Um, there's a great quote about this that I'm going to read to you from Fyodor Dostoevsky, the Russian author. Love all God's creation, all of God's creation, the whole and every grain of sand in it, every leaf, every ray of God's light. Love the animals, love the plants, love everything. If you love everything, you will perceive the divine mystery in things. When you are left alone, pray. Love to throw yourself on the earth and kiss it. Kiss the earth and love it with an unceas unceasing, consuming love. Strong words, beautiful words. That's the goal of creation season, that we will be reminded of this amazing creation which God made and gave to us, gave into our care. And especially this earth, our fragile planet home, our fragile planet home. Creation comes up throughout scripture, the Old Testament, filled with, with stories of nature. In the New Testament, filled with stories of nature and the physical elements of creation. Jesus, famous for talking about his faith and the faith that we all are called to, was using examples from creation and in that wonderful parable which you heard today, talking about the earth, the good soil. But God's word in those seeds is given to everybody in every condition. And sometimes that seed falls where, maybe because of a lack of attention or whatever, the evil spirit can come and take it away. It's gone. And sometimes that seed which is given unconditionally um, falls on rock, and there are no roots that go down, so uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't last. And sometimes, and sometimes it, it falls and grows with, with the thorns. And so the people who that represent um, are confused, and those thorns of the possessions and the challenges of this world mix in with that wheat and take it over. But sometimes, sometimes, God's seeds fall on good soil and they grow. Now that good soil is us and creating soil that is rich and good and receiving of God's word, that is our responsibility. God's going to give the word and the love and the truth and the joy to anybody, anybody. But it's up to us who believe, it's up to us who have chosen this path to follow Jesus Christ and to believe in God. It's up to us to create a home in which that seed can fall and flourish. We benefit by it and others around us benefit by it. The entire fragile planet benefits when we work on creating good soil for God's word to grow and spread. And there are a lot of ways we can do that. We do it by coming to church and corporate worship. We do that by adult formation events. And by the way, all of you are invited to join us following the liturgy in the reception room to learn more about creation and St. Francis and Claire. We do it by participating in ministries. We do it by being a part of faith community like like St. James. So lots of ways that we create good soil. And another way we do it is by prayer. By prayer. But during this season, during this season, we focus on how do we relate to the creation that is around us as a way of creating that good soil for God's Word. 
And let me tell you a little bit about some soil that I walked on last week. The backstory is that 25 years ago, I rode my bicycle following the Mississippi River from Lake Itasca down 40 miles past New Orleans, the entire length of the Mississippi River. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was an adventure. It was a journey. It was really sort of a pilgrimage. After I finished this, I thought, well, you know what? The next thing I'd like to do is to hike the Appalachian Trail. Um, you know, it goes through the east. I'm sort of an east person. And um, I started playing. I even bought some equipment. That was 25 years ago. 25 years ago, a quarter of a century. And uh, so this past, this past uh, month, I've been sort of dreaming about doing that, or at least going hiking sections of AT. And so this past week, I hiked two days, sort of as a trial run, a shakedown. <laughs> and uh, I prayed for it, and, and God spoke to me. And God said, Randolph, this ain't going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you may have had the dream, but that was 25 years ago. <laughs> and your equipment is 25 years old. <laughs> so I learned a lot on these past two days. It took me a whole day yesterday to recover from the whole thing, but I learned a lot. <laughs> and, and it's true, it's not going to happen. It's 2,000 miles. If I, if I average 10 miles a day, uh, that's, that's 200 days. I don't want to be away 200 days from my family and friends and parishioners and the, you know, my home. But, but, it was thrilling. And yes, I did drop down and kiss that path. Basically, it was about, about to the end of my journey, but I did drop down <laughs> and kiss that path. And I also kissed a rock. There's these fantastic boulders, huge boulders up there. This is just north of 211 out on the Appalachian Trail. Ah, look at those boulders. It was a fantastic, exciting experience because I did, even though I'm not going to hike the AT, I did experience a closeness, a, a religious, a spiritual connection to much of that trail. And I am so grateful, and I am going to do some more hiking. And I like doing it by myself. It's a strange thing. But the point is, I did get the message from God, seriously, that at being outside in creation is a way for me to strengthen my faith in God, and therefore in Jesus Christ. That is a fact. And that's the whole focus of creation season. I said that one way we can do it in addition of getting closer to God in addition to worship and ministry and adult formation, is through prayer. And I'm talking about a specific kind of prayer. I hope you have an insert called Lectio Divina with Creation. If you don't have one, maybe you could share. If you don't have somebody nearby that you could share, don't worry, I'll be happy to send it to you. In fact, it'll be in the weekly news this week. But this is, a, this is a teaching sermon, preaching, but also teaching you something that I think is very, very important. And Ben and I are encouraging you to give this a try. Because what I believe is that through praying in this contemplative way, you can experience God more fully in nature. And we are blessed with nature around us in this part of our country. So let me go through this. Can't really do it here because um, there are other things going on. But give it a try this afternoon or sometime this week. So Lectio Divina is an ancient practice of contemplative prayer. It goes back to the first centuries of Christianity. And in fact, to the first centuries of Christianity. And um, basically what it is, it's a way to read holy. Lectio Divina, holy reading. It's a way to study scripture by reading with the ear of your heart. Go through and settle down and really read those scripture passages and let it sink into your heart. So what I've done here is just to match that up with creation instead of talking about Lectio Divina with scripture. But you can do this with scripture as well. That's the source of it. I just want to go through it. 
The first step is to relax. Find a place out in, in, out in nature. It might be in your backyard. It might be on the Appalachian Trail. It might be near a park or a lake or something, or on a farm. Find a place in nature that, that you like and just, just sit down. Sit down on the ground, on the earth, or on a chair, on a tree stump, and just get comfortable. Just relax. Breathe naturally. And in some way, mark this place and time as sacred. You might just make the sign of a cross in the, in the dirt or something, just to say, God be with me. That's the first step. The second is to read, to read creation. Not a book, not scripture, but to read creation. Just, just look around and sort of see what's there. I'll just look around. You know, maybe you smell something interesting, maybe you see something interesting, you hear something, you might even touch the earth. You might even smell something interesting. And listen with the ear of your heart. It keeps going back to, it's not just a head thing, it's really with your heart. Listen to that morning dove coo. Listen to that squirrel running across the grass. Listen to a funny collection of rocks over there. You know, just listen with your heart. And decide which one of those little pieces, little slices of creation, you would like to focus on for the next few minutes. Then go to phase step three. Reflect on this part of creation. <coughs> What do you see? What do you observe? What captures your attention? What speaks to you? And underline this, what touches your heart? So again, you're outside, you focus on one thing, then you really read it, you really look at it in a still, quiet way. And be aware of what's, what's going on in your heart as you look at that wonderful example of God's creation. Then in step four, as you stay right there in that still, still sacred space with God, respond in some way. This is amazing, God. Thanks for bringing me to this point. Just some way, whatever a prayer comes, just an easy little prayer. And then finally, at some point, you can time yourself or just let it happen. Just let it evolve. Finally, just rest there. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. Just rest with God in God's creation. And when you think you're done, give thanks to the Creator. We are called as Christians to walk in the way of Jesus. And one of the ways that the church has told us that we can do that more and more is to see Jesus Christ and God in the creation around us. And one of the ways that we can see that more clearly is through praying with creation. I want you to try it. Because the funny thing is the more connected we are spiritually to creation, the healthier, actually, we are. The more we see a pile of dirt, not just as a pile of dirt, but God created this. God started this whole thing. It just sort of changed the way, changes the way we look at everything. The more we see a forest as a part of God's creation, the, one, the more we would like not simply to use what's out there for us, but to revere it in some way and to let it speak to us of the greatness and goodness of God in this world. So I encourage you to give it a try. And the more that we see God in creation instead of in our own efforts to control creation, the more we become humble in God's presence and more open we are to God's message. May you sometime this week find, 
set aside a little piece of time to be with God in this amazing creation and let God speak to your heart.